In this video, we will continue our discussion about the steps of a risk assessment. In this part of the tutorial, we will focus on step two of the nine-step NIST process for performing a risk assessment. Specifically, we will be talking about threat identification. A threat is anything that can take advantage and exploit a vulnerability that is within the system. This exploit can occur either through an intentional or accidental means. For example, it could be a hacker trying to get into the system or a scientist or employee entering bad data, or an administrator accidentally deleting a configuration file. Regardless of how they happen, they can obtain, damage, or destroy information or systems. These threats can occur either through natural means, like a storm affecting the servers or data storage, or it could be something like a fire or flood in the room that holds some of the project's assets. It could be an employee leaving the project, and this employee was the main system architect, or an employee leaving a laptop or device somewhere. Human threats are also outside the system. As we mentioned, a hacker trying to gain access to your system or just wanting to use your system for a botnet. So threats fall into two broad categories, those being the natural and those being human. The basic idea of a threat is that it is what you are trying to protect against. When thinking about threats, there are three things you should keep in mind, and those are the actor, motivation, and the vector. In other words, who, why, and how. Who or what is trying to affect the system? Why are they doing it? And how will they do it? It is important to always keep these in mind when looking at threats within the risk management, because they help you judge how likely something is to happen and what the impact of that event would be. For example, cyber terrorism is not something that most NSF cyber infrastructure projects have to worry about. In some cases, this might be a concern but for the most part, it is not very likely. So while the government and corporations might have to deal with, the likelihood of this impacting your project is very small. Whereas an employee deleting important data or spilling liquid on a server might be much more likely to happen. So when thinking about the threats, you need to identify who the threat is. Where is it coming from? Why will it happen? What is the motivation behind the threat? Disgruntled employees have high motivation and if this employee had access, that could be very serious. And finally, how will it occur? How will the vulnerability be exploited? So when looking at threats, it sometimes helps to categorize them in these terms. To start making an assessment how likely a particular threat is to exploit vulnerabilities will help with determining the impact later in the assessment. Now you might be sitting there saying, but I don't have anything an attacker could care about. We are just a simple little scientific project that started by studying aphids. We have nothing anybody wants. While this might be very true, as recent news has shown, your computer systems are out there and people are more than happy to exploit them and use them. You might be used simply as a jumping point to get somewhere else. You might be used just to have access to your free computing cycles. You might be turned into a bot for spamming. So even if you don't think you have anything important, you still have computers and servers and compute cycles somebody is more than willing to exploit and use. There is also the potential that someone thinks that by getting on your system, they can do something like harvest passwords and then access the rest of the university systems. They might do it simply for the bragging rights, to be able to tell their friends that they have broken into a system. So while you might not think that your project is important enough to attract attacks or big enough for someone to take notice of, you'd be surprised that many people still would be more than willing to access your system for any number of reasons. Therefore, you must take security seriously and truly make an effort to evaluate all the threats that could potentially affect your system. Some of the common threats we see within the scientific community are Criminals, people who are wanting access to your system to make use of it or to get sensitive information off of it. This could be so that they could get access to a bigger system that you're a part of 
or they are just looking for private personal information that they can use for other reasons. Insider threats. This would be employees behaving badly, whether it is intentional or accidentally. From mistakes made to actually having someone who is upset and wanting to damage the system. This is one of the most common ways systems get compromised. Another one is what the cybersecurity community refers to as script kiddies. Those out just looking to do it for fun. These are potentially juveniles who are just trying to figure out how to hack a system, so they are looking for vulnerable systems to increase their skills. They are mostly looking for the bragging rights and not really looking to damage the system. They are doing it for the fun and the thrill of it. Another area that is gaining an occurrence is that of the hacktivists. These are individuals who are looking to make some kind of statement. They might oppose the research you are doing, or they might just think they oppose it because they really don't understand what you're doing. They might also just be making use of your system as a launching point to get to the university as a whole or some other point. Identifying threats can be a daunting undertaking. This might be an area where you need outside help in identifying them. In this video, we have looked at determining the threats that might affect your system and how to go about identifying them during your risk assessment. If you would like more help with building a security system, please contact CTSC. You can get contact and other information on the CTSC website, trustedci.org. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF, grant number OCI 1234408.